Hello, my name is Nigel Griffiths. I work in IBM Power Systems Europe on AIX and Linux. This is an open source project, so if you want to get in contact, Nigel A. R. Griffiths at hotmail.com. The project wiki is tinyurl.com slash njmon. This series of videos is talking about njmon, a data gatherer that collects data from Linux, AIX and the VO server and puts it into various time series databases like InfluxDB and Grafana for the graphs. This is number four. We're going to import Grafana dashboards, including templates for the njmon data so you rapidly get a whole bunch of graphs in one go. I'm going to assume you'll be watching the videos in order and even have the software installed. You've got NJMON installed on each of your endpoints, your virtual machines or LPARs, and then you've got them gathering data and using one of the mechanisms, getting that data to the Influx database, and you have Grafana set up and connected to your Influx database, you're ready to create graphs. Two ways of doing that, you can go and look at movies 5, 6 and 7 in this series and create your own graphs. But if you want a flying start, then you should import a dashboard that somebody else has created and get that connected up to your data. And then you've got a whole set of graphs to look at immediately. And also, it's a very good way of learning from others. You find a graph that you really like, well, you can look at the graph details and see how they did that. And that's a very quick way of learning advanced features and settings. Now, the first thing about dashboards is, of course, you're using them on the screen to actually graph your data. But when you save that, it actually creates a JSON file. So that's nothing particularly scary. That's the same format as NJMON outputs. Now, once you've got a good set of graphs in a dashboard, then if you want to be generous, then you can save your dashboard, export it, and upload it to grafana.com. And then other people can see the, your graphs. They can download that JSON file, import it into their Grafana, connect it to their data, and they can see the same set of graphs for their machines. So they can use it, improve on it, and learn from it. In the Grafana documentation, there's a very good article about exporting and importing our dashboards. Now the first two, of course, the A and B, the saving and exporting, you won't be doing that for a little while, but I'll very quickly cover what somebody else has already done for you, so that when you download it, you can understand what's going on. Immediately, you'll be wanting to do an import, and then uh, actually get the using those dashboards from other people. Now it's very good practice to regularly save your dashboards anyway. A couple of times I spent a couple of hours making it look just right, then I flip to a different dashboard and come back and I've lost all my changes. So regularly saving is a good idea. And this way we'll actually make effectively a new dashboard if we save it this particular way. So we go to the top right and we click on that settings cog. Then we go down to the here it says save as. This is actually makes a new dashboard rather than a new variation of a dashboard that it already knows so it's a save as operation then it will actually put in the name of the current one in here and add copy at the end so I delete that and make it a new version number and then hit the save nothing particularly complicated there right let's move on how do we export the dashboard well we click this little button again at the top right it's a square and a little arrow called share dashboard in the pop-up you get it'll be showing the link details so you take the tab for surprise surprise exports then we move over this thing in here, which means we're now using an export to sharing externally, as opposed to giving it to a friend of yours that's using the same copy of Grafana. And then we click the Save to File. Pretty near instantaneously with my browser in Chrome, it actually saves us a file, doesn't really tell you where it is, and the browser opens a new tab, and here's the contents, the JSON format for the actual dashboard. Now you might not notice, but up in here, it's actually saved a file and opened that file. So this is on my my uh, Windows 10 machine uh, uses Nigel Griffiths downloads is where it's put the file and here is the name of the file the percent twenties I think are space characters in the file name so this is where the actual file is we'll use that in a minute right now next we've got the uploading of the dashboard to grafana.com they keep hundreds of dashboard examples that you could download and try it's at grafana.com slash grafana slash contribute you have to log in with your grafana user ID that takes a couple of seconds and no big deal about that um, mostly setting a password. Then you're going to click, it's slightly grayed out in this uh, capture in here, it says upload a dashboard, pretty obvious. You're then going to click on this area in here and go and select that file that we created, and we, we saw that in the previous slide. And you click the upload, it'll update that, literally sub-second, really quick. But then it's going to ask for quite a lot of details which will help the users of this new dashboard. So there's a description, uh, that can actually be in the 
actual JSON file if you put a description on your dashboard before you uh, saved it and exported it. There's also a little thing that I found a little bit confusing that you can upload images. The first one is a logo which is square. If you give it an oblong logo it'll cut off the sides and you'll just see the middle bit of that. Then there's a whole number of screen images you can upload. I'm doing sort of four or five as examples to get people the idea of what you're going to get when you try this. There's some details of readme sort of hints and tips for your users to actually get them going and what's it for and uh, the sort of graphs that you, you're trying to uh, demonstrate. Now that's all very interesting but if you are new to Grafana and you've just got NJMON working you want to find the NJMON dashboards that you can then quickly go and have a look at some interesting graphs. So it's the next bit you actually need. You may do the exporting and sharing later on. So you go to the same uh, web place but this is a Grafana slash dashboards. This is what it looks like and in here you got a way of looking up various dashboards. If you just type in NJMON jmon into the search and hit the return key then you'll get a whole list of the njmon dashboards is what you're probably after these are uh, little white logos in here these are the ones that i've uploaded uh, fairly recently and there's a couple more here from some of the other uh, nice guru type people that have been using njmon in the past and they're sharing some of their dashboards too in here we have uh, one for aix in here we have one for uh, uh, linux in here and i have two for the whole servers where on a power machine we can select the serial number and it shows you all the logical partitions and the vio servers that are on a particular machine this one has the, the name of the machine hard-coded, and this is the switchable, if you like. This is the templated version of the one above. So if you click on one of those on the list, I've selected here the NJMON for AIX. You have the logo in here in square. You have the oblong. These are screen dumps with several pages worth of them. So your users or you can actually see the sorts of graphs you're going to get, and you can send if that's what you really want. Here's the uh, explanation in here. And note in here we have the dashboard ID, if you just remember that that or cut and paste it with your mouse uh, then you could just download it using that or you can say copy into your clipboard and then you can paste that into the next screen that we'll look at so we go back to your own copy of Grafana either on from your machines or via the cloud then we hit the plus sign the create and uh, import and we get a pop-up panel like this and so in here we can put the dashboard uh, ID or in the URL that we got that from the previous slide. Um, or if you did it into the um, your paste buffer, you can do a control V on Windows and, and paste it in here. Or if you saved it as a file, you can click on here, the upload the JSON file, and that will upload it. It's uploading it now to your copy of Grafana. So I've cut and paste the JSON file into this uh, window in here couple of hundred uh, lines long. Actually at the bottom here you see this unique ID. If you export a dashboard and then try and import it, it says hang on I've got two dashboards now with this magic cookie. You could edit this by hand or on the next screen we can actually ask it to generate a completely new number. So we'll do a, a load here. So here is uh, the one I'm trying to uh, load. It says there's already something with the same name in here so perhaps you want to uh, change that. I don't think anything we like in here. We can manage our dashboards. I just put everything in the general at the moment. I haven't got too many. Uh, the unique identifier then, it says, hang on, we already got something with a unique identifier in this file. We can ask it to change it. Let's just change it by hand and make sure that it's different. And then we're going to select the database source. So if I click on this one in here, here's all my databases. These are all old experimental things in here. This is the, the only one and the current one I'm using at the moment. I suppose I should clean those up, but at least it shows you what's uh, going on in here. You may have other data from um, your Windows operating systems or even my own N-Extract type data from a HMC. Okay, we'll just do an import. And it says, yep, it's done. And then it's gone and look in the dashboard and says, OK, which of my data source servers um, has the right criteria for this one? It's uh, Linux, so it looks for services, uh, machines, or host names that are identified as Linux. And it's got a, a list of them uh, all up in here. That's all done completely automatically. Now, other videos in this series tell you about how to create and uh, edit these sorts of things. So I'm going to do a very lightning quick tour. First, I'll just squeeze my web page in here so it fits on, and some of the fields are, and are struggling to be displayed. You probably have a much bigger screen. If you don't, well, <laughs> get a bigger screen is the answer if you want to see lots of graphs. So these at the top in here are single stat sort of operations. 
and we can see it's a power 9 and a serial number in here this uh, 900622P is IBM gobbledygook speak uh, for an LC922 machine we have uh, 4 threads per core these are the logical CPUs but they are the CPU core threads so if you divide that by the threads you see they have uh, 32 real CPU cores in this machine it's uh, the PowerPC64 little Indian the operating system here is uh, Ubuntu 1804 this is the this is the NJMON version that's capturing the data that we're looking at. Now, the design gurus tell you to always have half a graph showing at the bottom of the screen to encourage people to say, have a look below. If we scroll down, we can see we've got sort of four context switches. Here's a uh, memory. And um, I've had lots of discussions uh, recently. This available memory is a Linus Torvalds guess of how much memory you've got free, actually. Um, the free is genuinely unused. There's a whole lot of memory that's sitting there with content that may or may not be helpful, but you could use it to run applications. Um, so let's do an example of uh, changing that. I want that to be the uh, total instead. So click on the title, hit in here, then we see the data source at the top. Where the what fields it's coming from? Here's the memory available. I want to change that to total. If we type in the start of it, we can see mem total in here, and I want to just display um, total on the graph. Um, down below is the free and free. Okay, if we go to here, it's some details about how it's displaying the graph, and in here we've got the the title line. So we'll change that at the same time. And then we can hit escape, escape, or we can click the button in here. So now we have memory total and uh, memory actually free, as uh, they are good to uh, compare. More stuff down below about uh, some of the details of this machine and uh, what's going on. Now, if you're first time in any um, Grafana dashboard, this column up in here tells you which time period that you want to look at, it's from the last five minutes to yeah, the last five years, well that seems you've got some data available to you, so that's worth doing. If you end up with a chart that has nothing on it at all, um, then uh, zoom out. Maybe you're looking at the last five minutes and there's no data collected in the last five minutes, and so it'll say nope, nothing. So you drill out for the last seven days or something, you should find some data. As I said, this is a dashboard template, so we can change the server we're actually talking to. For example, if I click on here, this is a Raspberry Pi, an ARM 7 processor, again running uh, Ubuntu 16 in this case, all the graphs down below too. Now I can go to another one in here, Silver 2, this is a power logical partition running on a S924, this is a gobbledygook for it, and we've got similar sets of graphs in here, and we can also, I know a lot of people not interested in power, but maybe want to look at the Intel. So here's an, an Intel machine. It's called Ultraviolet. Again, this is using uh, Ubuntu in this particular case. And I couldn't find a serial number. It's, it's a fairly old box. Uh, but it is a genuine Intel chip in here. And we can see the CPU utilization is down at sort of 1%-ish. This is actually my uh, previous copy of InfluxDB and Grafana. It's actually still running and still collecting data for about uh, 12 different endpoints. And we can see it's <laughs> running down to 1%. It's got plenty more bandwidth to uh, take some more data and things like that. Uh, one, one thing I didn't point out before is um, file systems, of course, that's not one resource, is it? That's a whole bunch of resources. So this is an example of a group by graph. Again, if we click here and edit, we can see the uh, the group by file system name in here, and we use the special hieroglyphics in here to actually pick out the names. That gives us the, uh, you know, the, the root, admin, backup, home, opt sort of information. So here's the NJMON template dashboard for AIX. I'm using the dark theme in here to make sure you understand that I've changed drastically what we're looking at. Again, we're struggling to display all the characters inside the boxes in here because I've got a low resolution screen here to make the video fit. So the, the timestamp here just about gets where the LPAR names has been cut off a little bit and the serial number's got a couple of letters missing. But otherwise we're getting away with it. Oh, and it's a Power 9 architecture or 8 I think actually in the case. Um, if we change to a different machine, maybe a more update machine in here, so this is a Power 9 machine running the latest copy of uh, AX 7.2 we can see we're over clicking here on our Power 9, this is an S924 
a whole bunch of graphs in here. Here's the quite interesting and important one where we have the entitlement here in blue and the CPUs consumed. We're just picking up to the entitlement. We do have a little bit of headroom with the number of virtual CPUs. Load averages in here, gigahertz ratings, a lot more stats with AIX so we can have a lot more detail. And I've also done some experiments in here looking at so some of the extra graphs that we have in the later versions of uh, Grafana and if you want to find out how we did that or how I did that then you can click on the, the banner and edit and go and have a look at either the graph type or where the data actually came from the from the NJMON data. This is looking across some uh, different CPUs which of them uh, are most busy. Uh, the order will be improved with the latest version of NJMON. Uh, this is doing alphabetical sorting of numerical fields at the moment. So you, you get the, the 1, the 10, the 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, then it goes on to 2. Oh, oh well. We, we've got that fixed now. Again, we've got some uh, pie charts in here, or donut chart if you prefer. These are called gauges uh, in here. And this is uh, memory use, so it lets you compare them very quickly. Got file systems and the differences in here between logical and physical CPU use can be investigated. Numbers of uh, interrupts are available as well. Then we've got networks and we've got disk usage. So lots of stats in there. Uh, AIX is uh, very rich in stats. Of course, the VO servers are running AIX, but there's a mixture of VO server type resources. We'll be working on that uh, next. This is actually monitoring a whole machine. So up in here we have serial numbers. Uh, this is for AIX. We could do a similar thing for uh, Linux. And uh, so I can switch between machines, for example, in here, and get different sorts of uh, data out. And you can see in here we have two VO servers and two AIX servers running in here. And uh, you can see how I do that. Again, if we hit the E character, you can see the uh, query that I'm using in here. And I'm using the uh, group by hosts in here to tell us how to extract the data from the database. Well, I hope these templates that I've created will be good starter point for you. Um, they need further development, but I think the point is for the NJ1 project is that I'm supplying the data. You've got enough dashboard uh, and graphs to choose from to go off and do your thing and to study your machines the way you want to actually do it. Look forward to cooperating with others, creating uh, better and more detailed dashboards. And so we're done looking at the importing of Grafana dashboards, including templates for NJMON data. We had one for Linux, one for AIX, and one for complete machines. Next up, we'll be working on a dashboard for the virtual I.O. server and the virtual resources. The next video in the series number five is creating your first Grafana dashboard graphs for your NMON data. Now we've finished making this fourth video at the seven part series, all seven are available. And don't forget, if you enjoyed this video and learned something, then please give us a thumbs up, it's always good to know we're on the right track.